Hello everyone, and welcome back to Fire Emblem Heroes. So this video might be a day, or two, or even a whole week late, because our whole town has lost power. You see, during the storm, a tree decided that, Oh yeah, I'm just gonna fall over and die and trip over all these wires while I'm at it. No, I hope you don't mind. So, luckily, I was able to go to the Burger King to refill my powers. So I must give thanks to Burger King for giving me the power to record this. And I also must give thanks to God Grima for winning the voting gauntlet so that I get 500 extra feathers so that something good came out of today. Alright, anyway, let's evaluate our units. So the first one is this Jacob. So this Jacob here is this brave bull monstrosity with sturdy blow, although I don't recommend it, with bold fighter and the deadly death ploy. So this guy does a chunk of damage on the player phase. I don't know why he would use Sturdy Blow though. I mean, I don't even need to worry about counterattack that much when I am when I've already got 37 defense. I would put everything I have into my offense though, since I'm gonna quad. That's like a whole eight damage that you're missing out by not using Death Blow. Still, you know, it's a very deadly build. He will most likely kill everyone anyway, but just in case, you know. On top of this, he even has the Earth Blessing, so that's that's an overwhelming amount of power. You're going to need a lot of defense to survive something like this. Or you need a Raven Tome user. But yeah, for the most part, this is a very solid offensive build. Okay, so the next one is a Sharior. Jafar. Okay, so this Jafar is running a Savage Vantage build. Now, Jafar is pretty good at it. But, eh, I don't think he's as good. I mean, his attack is low, but it is made up by the fact that he deals uh, def death and res minus 7. So in essence, he has 51 attack. But even then... Eh. One, Jenny still does more damage. Two, this is very important. More units have more defenses than they do resistance. Usually that's how it is. I mean, yeah, you do see people who specialize in res, but... In most cases, people have more defenses than their resistance. I mean, psh, people practically use resistance as their dump stat half the time, more than half the time anyway. So, Jafar is a good unit for doing this. But, eh, I think healers do it just a little bit better at the very least. Although he does have the ability to um, ignore magic counterattack. But then again, is that really such a good thing? Getting counterattacks is a good thing sometimes because then you can enter into vantage range. All in all, he's a pretty decent unit. I like him a lot, though I highly doubt I'll be able to build him anytime soon myself. Third unit is this Soul with his Kagero. Okay, so this Kagero is very interestingly built. I see this Rogue Dagger, and I see close defense and close counter. So, what this horrible thing does is that she goes and attack, suck up the defense, and then she baits people to death. Now, I can see the merit in all this, because now she's got 29 defense, thanks to this. And if you were to add 6 and 6, that would be... Ooh, 41. Damn, that's, that's quite a bit. So, 41 defense, that's pretty solid. And then you're also looking at 44 resistance. Not bad, not bad at all. So, I mean, this is a pretty solid build for... Surprise counterattacking. Although maybe I would have run Vantage over Wings of Mercy. Wings of Mercy is better for something that'll one-shot someone rather than uh, relying on counterattack. Still, it could be useful for some certain surprises as well because Rogue Dagger does steal defense and resistance from the enemy. All in all, it's a very interesting build. I, I like it, but I'm not sure if I'll run that on Kagero. Someone like... Um, Someone a little more defensive, like Zaizo, might be better for this. But still, it's a very solid build. It's kind of scary, actually. Alright, and here we have Minerva. Okay, this doesn't look like a plus speed Minerva. Ward Flyers. So this thing is supposed to be countering arrows. I suppose I could see the merit in it. 36 defense isn't too bad, but 40 speed could get you doubled in most cases um archers are quite fast offensive ones anyway the good ones however you do have this but aether kind of kills it aether is eh, more for arena scores than anything else 
but still, it's not a bad build, but could use a little more res for this encounter, though. Still, still, it's not a bad build. It, it, it's workable. I can see it working. Alright, now we have class. We need ohm. So this ohm appears to be a standard plus attack one. I think that's plus attack anyway. With uh, base speed, because I recognize his speed. I think his speed is like 30 base. Or was it 33? No, no, I think it was 30 base. No, wait, no, 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 it could be 33. Yeah, I think he got minus speed on his that now I looked at it. Okay, I mean, I can understand that. That's not so very bad for Alm, because the thing with Alm is that he just goes up to someone and goes, ba ba, and then they die. He's definitely a, a player face monster now. Let's see, though. I mean, I could see this working. I mean, Death Blow does a chunk of damage, and if you wipe someone out with Heavy Blade and Glimmer, you know, then then you win. Although, seeing that I use all myself, I can understand that there will be times where you can't do that. So, he's kind of dead in the water with things that he can't one-shot. And that speed is not going to do him any favor when somebody attacks him. So, all in offensive action, but other than that... He needs to be careful what happens if somebody strikes him. He's kind of like, oh, in a way, a two-range Reinhardt instead of like four or five, thanks to that stupid cavalry BS. Range cavalry BS, mind you. Okay, now let's go to Fabry. Fabry's without wrath. Okay, with Aether. Ugh, I'm so sick and tired of seeing Aether. Arena scores. Oh, okay, I may lie a little bit because, you know, I I was fine all this time until recently where 5,040 points apparently is enough to stay in tier 20, making me not have to, can't run screw around builds anymore. But still, still, yeah, I don't really like Aether. It's just, ugh, it takes too long to come out. Especially if you're planning on using Wotal and no steady breath or anything like that. Speed ploy, interesting. Although his resistance is... Eh. Uh, it'll work though. 30, 30 is a decent number. A lot of people have low res, so... You can build up like Selena Miku. Yeah, he's pretty much a better copy of, of her, really, with thanks to all these uh, BST power creep. But, unfortunately for him, he's, well, Grand Hero... Uh, <laughs> Um, a Tempest Trial reward, so he can't be stacked too often, uh, merged too often. Alright, now we have Marth. Ooh, this one is a monster. Look at this thing. This thing is total support. We have Falchon with the two to all stat support. We have Reciprocal Aid for healing. This thing is just for self-defense. Fury for well, self-defense. And then there's Chill Speed. Jesus Christ, man. You know, as if I'm not doing enough with my Falchon and my dual drive. You know, I gotta stick in the Chill Speed as well. That's honestly the same build I would have built Marth with. Because Chill Speed is actually quite deadly. I mean, just look at this. Now, he support his his team in such ways that he's the ultimate support. I, I am, I, if I pull a Celica myself, I would definitely slap on chill speed on his B slot. It's not like he needs his B slot for anything really. He's just gonna sit back and be all general foresight and give stats anyway. I like it. Bust out and kill Dorgons. All right, now we have Blimp with Cephiel. So how do you build your Cephiel? So instead of going for the distant defense setup, he goes and gives plus dev for this thing. Okay, I mean, it makes sense. You're not using distant counter, so steady breath and close defense. You've set Cephiel to be the um, standard melee tank. I like it. It's not so very bad. Though I think, of course, you know, you have your reason to run ether, so I won't say much about that. Though, Ignis would do so much damage. Like, so much damage on that defense. Jesus Christ, dude. Still, you know, I I can understand, you know, running Aether for more. I mean, Aether is also not that bad. You use it to sustain, and thanks to Ventral Fighter and Steady Breath, you're likely to get it proc since he's so incredibly slow. But, eh... I don't know. I'm, I'm a fan of Bold Fighter on him. Uh, no, not Bold. Uh, 
What was that in? Oh my god. Worry fighter. Worry fighter on him because I like to tank really, really hard. Well, and then there's his best friend Roy. Let's see. Best friend Roy is using lots of Wudal power. Fury, Wrath, Attack Tactics. Okay, alright. You know, he's probably killing somebody in the arena or something. Usually Roy Tear sets his stupid thing to go and do uh, Grand Hero battles, so sometimes you'll see him using um, Zampato or something like that, or some other ways to uh, handle their map. Oh, and Soul. Interesting. It's the stupid uh, without Soul setup. I mean, Soul will still do extra damage, so it's not entirely wrong. Yeah. Without, without Wrath, it's like plus 20 damage to your soul, so it's actually kind of scary. It's like a mini ether when you think about it. Mm, yeah, for the most part, it's like a mini ether. Alright, Nero Angelo with the Swift Sparrow. The green Tone Breaker. You know, Sonya is a really violent beast. I mean, you're even using Moonbow and <laughs> Dark Excalibur. So this Sonya is set up to just rip your face off on the first turn. And you know what? It's actually very, very painful. Especially for spellcasters to have something like this. Unfortunately, it's tied to Dark Excalibur, so it's not readily available for people besides Sonya and Merrick. But still, it is a very scary setup, especially with Res Ploy as well. God damn, dude, with running off a of 36 Res, which is usually enough to kill most low res units, because again, more people have more dev than they do have res. Res tanks is not as common as dev tanks. Mr. November with Naui! Okay, I mean, I can see this sort of working. It's a 40 speed lightning breath speed now. We and you have glimmer, okay. And but vantage, I don't know. I probably run quick repose over vantage on her just because she's not exactly fast enough to double in the first place. Vantage could be useful to catch people by surprise, but still, eh, I think quick repose will do a little more good than vantage. Distant defense is okay, pretty good. I mean, you need to defend yourselves against the dark arts. Threatened res is okay, I like that too, but we can probably run better C skills for, for her, because threatened is such a slow skill. You have to wait for someone to get into range first, and then they will proc. But by then, something's already happened. They either killed you, or you killed them, or something along the lines of that. Next, we have Simai with Raven. Now, I love Raven a lot. He, he's the epitome of offense actions. Now, I've been meaning to build one myself, but unfortunately, resources are tight, and the votes don't seem to... Well, he's second place, uh, tied with Azama, but uh, I'll think about what to do with that at some point. Anyway, so it appears that Simai is set up with Wrath and Heavy Blade and an Aether. Ugh, so second tire seat, Aether. Still, it's a pretty scary setup. I mean, in the end, he's gonna chop the living hell out of people and then heal up whatever damage he took. Although I'm more of a fan of desperation sometimes, getting a second strike would be really nice. I would run Wrath if I were to use something like Glimmer or Moon Bow, but yeah, I don't know. You could use this, could work, and I mean, like, pfft, uh, arena points can't argue, I guess. I'm also a fan of Swiss Sparrow on Raven. See, some people argue that running Fury might be better, because instead of minus 5 to, all, uh, to defend stats, you're only minusing 2 with Fury. But, when you really think about it, it actually isn't worth it. You see, Raven should be on the offensive. And if you're on the offensive, well, after you make an attack, you lost 6 health. So, any benefit that you would have gained from Fury has been lost already. So... I, I don't I don't like I don't like using fury on offensive units like that. Now I can understand if you need to use dual face units like oh um, I don't know like uh, Rebecca. Rebecca could use fury a little bit better because she's a dual face monster. But Raven I don't know. Raven is more player face than he is enemy face. I would not use him to face tank someone. That just doesn't work. So fury is not as good. Swiss Sparrow, I can understand because, you know, you have to attack someone, maybe, you know, you might take a hit, in which case you could survive a little bit better than you would have if you had lost 6 health. Not to mention, you know. But, life and death, 
two, two life and death, life and death six might not be so bad either, but nah, then again, I think about it, mm, really, nah. Because his speed is already pretty high, so Sir Sparrow by itself is pretty decent, because, you know, he's not going to get doubled anyway. Now, I can imagine, like, life and death being a little bit better on characters who are kind of slow, so that they can prevent doubles, but for Raven, he's already pretty good at doing that, since he already's got one, so... I think Swiss Sparrow is probably the better choice of the two, but life and death has its merits. Especially against really, really, really fast speed demons, but 47 speed is pretty tough to beat. This is pretty solid as it is. Alright, now let's move on to the next. And now we have Sun with Lind, Diao Chan. So what does Diltan has? Diltan is using Dark Aura for support, life and death, and desperation, known speed and speed. With that amount of speed and that desperation, you know, that is pretty deadly. You could almost double said Raven from earlier, but well, not quite enough. Still, it's pretty deadly. It's like seeing another Delthea right now with that wonderful 10 defense, but... This thing is absolutely out of control strong. And of course, running Aether for stupid arena points. But hey, you know, you don't really need your skills when you hit that hard anyway, right? <laughs> yeah, this thing is a monster. I I kind of wish I had one. Stupid 5-star only Deltan. Okay, and now we have Barst. See, there's a Barst here with Distant Counter, with Slaying Axe. Look how beefy he is. He's a monster. Though, unfortunately, Distant Counter running on a 21 res, uh, plus 10, is kind of... Eh. I mean, yeah, I guess you can counter some archers and such, but... Eh. Half of its effectiveness has already been cut because of its low res, so I don't I wouldn't use Distant Counter on uh, Bars. I'd probably just focus on his melee action. Still, things as he is, he does have pretty decent health. His speed could... Use some work though, so again, eh, eh, you're expected to take two hits first before you can launch your second attack. By then, you could have already died. So, if you're gonna focus on defense, better just not use distant counter, use something else. Still, I mean, he's a monster, he's got a lot of health, so running panic ploy is also very good. Infantry pulse, very good, so he's solid as he is. And then, oh man, fire blessing for more death, you monster. Yeah, Bars is a pretty good death tank over here. Alright, let's see what Aether Rick has built up for Lucina. Well, of course, we have this wonderful bond, and then we have Panic Ploy. Alright, winning on 50 hell, that's decent, I suppose. Sword Breaker, of course. But Distant Counter? Well, I guess Distant Counter could somewhat work when if you have 4 to all stats. We're still looking at only like 24 res, but. You do only get hit once because Lucina has decent speed. And for the most part, you also can get hmm, speed plus 4 thanks to being near someone. So you're looking at 47 speed, which isn't too bad for avoiding doubles. And then you can probably... Uh, I wouldn't know about Sword Breaker though. Quick Repulse might be a little bit better. 43 speed is fast, but it's not it's blisteringly fast. There's going to be people that you can't double on the return. Like that wonderful like that wonderful raven or that wonderful lin although lin is gonna just rip her to shreds i mean look at that resistance but still you know it's a decent set it's not a bad set but that, that res man i don't know <laughs> usually when i run distant counter i want to have pretty decent res before doing it now we have mount fuji fuji using rebecca so i have the greatest respect for people who run stuff like Rebecca. I mean, I have one myself. So let's see what kind of setup do we have here. We have focusing on her resistance, okay, and using Slaying Bow is not a bad choice, although Aether. Of course, you know, we all need our arena points. If we're not, though, I would probably run Iceberg or something. Two charge Iceberg is pretty deadly. And we have guard. Okay, so this Rebecca plans on just stopping enemy from using skills. However, your speed is a little low to run guard. I would hope that you have a better speed to run guard with. Although you do have speed ploy and attack ploy. So I can think of this as 43 speed, which is pretty good. I mean, you know, you could get some buffs. I could 
overcome it. That's just what I kind of should have mentioned earlier. And then you also have attack ploy to tank a little bit better. So it's kind of cute watching Rebecca using ploys. I, I, I like that. So Sparrow is okay. Though, you know what? Maybe I would have run life and death. Yeah. It, though it's kind of counterintuitive. Though Fury might be better. Yeah, Fury is probably better for dual face monsters like this. It's kind of counterintuitive to use life and death sometimes, but it does give 5 speed. And 5 speed could mean a difference between... Well, getting doubled or not getting doubled, and of course, doubling someone and not doubling someone on the return. Hiya! With, um, this Elincia. Okay, well, we have the stock build with Death Blow, a meaty, on a 52 attack, not bad. Home Flyers, Heavy Blade, Gale Force. Well, there you have it. That's as standard as it's gonna get for offensive flyer units. Scary as hell. Oh, and Burke with Ephraim. Let's see. Why does everybody insist on putting distant counter on, on any units that they see? I mean, yeah, sure, I guess it helps your arena points, but God, it's so wasteful. Let's see. So what do we have here? Me, 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 me. 24 boosts. Oh, God, Jesus Christ. It's not like, you know, it's he's got a skill that allows him to do a follow-up attack on the return because it's an like initiate combat Sigmund. So, I guess he does have Vantage, I, I guess he has something to, you know, defend himself, but... Uh, although, Heavy Blade, Seekman, and Moonbow is very deadly. You will guarantee yourself a nice, wonderful spike on the attack. But honestly, if that's the case, I might as well use Death Blow. Why Distant Counter? Why just slap Distant Counter on everything? Oh well, I do see some funny builds with Burke, though. I see him use uh, Riss, I saw him use other crazy plus 10 units i like guys named named burke i like i like people like burkut and uc berkeley so burke is cool he just needs to get rid of that distant counter i uh, didn't look in here well didn't know the distant counter but at least this one makes sense because we actually have resistance to run off of quick repose and lance valor i guess you were using to level lance i guess speed could use a little work but eh, what can you do sometimes Resistance 33, Quick Repose. I mean, Quick Repose, you can probably run off, run that off and kill someone with it. 35 and 33 is not like super amazing defense, but good enough. Above average defense that can help you survive. So even if you get doubled, you might be able to survive and counter. Oh, your health might be a little low though, but eh, it should be enough. Still, I'm seeing distant counter on everything. All right, and fresh cut with Soleil, Pouring Girl. So Pouring Girl here has a lot of attack and speed, and look at this, like 61 and 50 speed. Jesus Christ, and running on Slaying Edge, uh, Distant Defense. Uh, I guess that would put you at, like, 26 and 33. But, uh, it's kind of weird. But, eh, I suppose that works. Vantage is pretty deep, pretty good for a fast unit, because then all of a sudden you just reverse things. And, of course, if you double them, it's even it's going to be even more painful. So, you get to strike them twice before they can hit you a second time. With some stupid skill like that Siegmund. Still, hmm, drive speed... Not a bad setup. I like it. Draconic Aura on a two charge. This thing will rip someone to shred on a second attack. Kind of like what happened with Vantage. So, yeah, it's pretty good, though. Uh, maybe I would have run something that suits melee combat a little better, but... Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can see this horrible pouring girl to be a threat in a battlefield. And then, of course, add three more speed with Water Blessing. No problem. You will make a fresh cut. Oh, and here comes Hinata! Hinata is a monster. I mentioned him a, a couple times when it comes to uh, Super Magic Ike. Like, people give steady breath to, to the legendary Ike. Like, what the hell, man? Well, you can just run Hinata if you're just going to do something like that. And as you can see, this is the kind of setup that destroys melee units. You have just Slaying Edge. You have bon <laughs> Bonfire. Oh, my God. Okay, so, yeah, he, you know, he gets hit. He replies immediately with a bonfire, powered by wrath, if they hit hard enough. So, Hinata is a scary unit. In terms of dealing with melee, he's very scary. He's got infantry pulls, he's got quick repulse. This guy's a monster. Holy crap, dude. 
you get hit. Oh, here's a bonfire. Oh, you survive and you hit me again? Well, here's another bonfire. Yeah, no one's going to survive that. that. That's way too much for people. So, yeah, Hinata is a really good character. I, I don't know why people like look at him as just purely Fury 3. If you actually build Hinata, you will see stuff like this. And that is what happens. Jesus Christ. All right, and here's Cameron with wonderful Boobasaurus Rex. Uh, Boobasaurus Rex lacks speed, but it can be made up with gold flyers from her friends or home flyers from her friends. So flyer speed is okay, I suppose. Especially if you run her solely on Flyer Emblem. Eh, Glacies, of course. This thing is set up to be a ranged tank. I like it. Though my Boobasaurus Rex is a little different. Still, I don't like the lack of speed, though. It makes me nervous to see Boobasaurus Rex with less speed. You also run Guard, but Guard Quick Repose is not a bad setup. The main problem with Distant Counter, though, of course, is that now you, you're going to get shot to pieces by Archers. Your Quick Repose is not going to be able to help you, but, you know. At least you have some something going on when it comes to countering Mages, thanks to that 39 res. And we have Ow! Ow! With this wonderful life and death Yato Korin! I think I mentioned him before, and he's got a lot of speed on the offense, and four, uh, 51, so that's no laughing matter. 51 speed is quite high. Not quite enough to double that that um, Raven from earlier, but I'm sure if he gets a buff, he could do it too. So this guy set his Corrin up to go and be as fast as possible, and when Yato finally receive a weapon refinery update, we can see some amazing things with him. And free win with, well, your standard aimer, I guess. It's not using that stupid slaying sword build, but, eh, you know. Era is era with that Rekno Astra. Oh, look at that dual smoke. What a chain smoker. <laughs> but, yeah, distant counter. Eh, I don't know. I don't know. We're running on that. But the speed does help her from getting hit twice, so I guess I can understand that. Alright, Fire Sweep Bow, Cancel if any, three cancers been sighted. Old Moon. Your Moon is so old. This Old Moon is set up to be a counter, but he also sets himself up with Bold Fighter, so that, you know, yeah, I don't feel like, I don't feel like getting hit now, so I'm gonna go and attack, because, you know, I have Quick Repulse and Bold, bold Fighter, so I'm a dual face monster, including this close counter. I mean, his attack is already pretty decent, so I guess I can see the reasoning behind it. So we have an all-round monster with this Jacob. Not as crazy as the first Jacob we saw with the Brave Bow and all the power attached to it, but I can see this thing being very versatile, versatile and very helpful. It's still, eh, eh. a little bit of focus I think might be better. But still, god damn it, why why do people do stuff? Oh, okay, no, 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 I do the same thing too, so what am I saying? I'm a horrible person too. I, I have the same build, except for Blazing Wind, I was using Draconic Aura. Though Blazing Wind could have could have some interesting uh, use to it, because you're using Fire Sweep Bow, so Vantage won't be able to do much <laughs> against that. God, that is so disgusting, you're a horrible person. But so am I, because I also have one myself. Now to scuttle is with Minerva. Oh, what happened with you? You're up like 39 speed on Life and Death 3. What the hell? Your minus speed? Jesus Christ! Your minus speed, Minerva. I don't know. I mean, I guess in a way you don't cut too much of your defense stats if you do that. But still, I mean, your resistance is kind of low. And your speed is kind of low. It's risky. It's risky. Still, you set yourself an offensive monster, but desperation on 39 speed as a plus 10 is a bit of a... It's a bit of a stretch here. I mean, yeah, you could run flyer buffs, but... Eh, I would much rather have a, at least neutral speed before doing that. I'll declare, of course, running off Glimmer and Quick and Pulse, so you can understand that this thing is gonna be like, yoop, on the first strike. But, oh god, the desperation on 39 speed is kind of worrisome. 
you know, Savage Blow could be kind of interesting if you want to kill someone else afterwards. Better off for Gale Force builds, though. Alright, now we have Kusabi with the Saizo. Now, I've mentioned Saizo a million times, and Saizo is a monster. Combined with his Smoke Dagger, his defense is now 46. And then you got Close Counter, of course, to deal with that. And you have Wind Sweep, so that you can carefully inflict your stupid smoke and not get counter attack so wind this is one of those instances that wind sweep works well because wind sweep is more for applying these kinds of things and then not suffer counter attacks so that when someone attacks you well they, they get smoke dagger <laughs> attacks instead of whatever fresh attack that they have and then you have savage blow okay i can understand that so after you hit them and wreck them and give them all kinds of savage blow you can counter attack and that seven damage might just be enough to rip someone's face off then we have the standard ether for point business and eh, i wonder if i would have run quick repose though quick repose might be might be better for this if you need just initiate attack yep so yeah quick quick repose might be better for this 41 speed is good but not good enough to double on the other hand if you were to use that with quick repose someone will most likely die Sometimes they might survive, sometimes they don't. Or you could run dual Savage Blow, yeah, that, that could work too. But in which case, Vantage might be better. Still, yeah, they... 48 attack isn't exactly super high either. I think Quick Repulse might be a better idea. Still, this is a scary build, very scary. Roar, though, with Mikaya! Funny, life and death, brings you up to 39 speed, wind sweep. Okay, all right, I can see the merit in that because, you know, 39 isn't exactly a very high speed, so... And then you have Phantom Speed. Mm. But still, I don't know. I don't really like Wind Sweep. Yeah, I guess you don't get countered attack, but... <sighs> see, if Thani is something that gives people debuffs and such, then, you know, I could see the use for Wind Sweep, kind of like what happened with Saizo earlier. But in this case... Eh, I suppose not taking a counter attack damage would be nice, but eh, I don't know. I think we could do a little bit better with Mikaya. Something else. Maybe... Eh, 39. It's still gonna get you doubled, though. I don't know. Quick Repulse is fine, but Wind Sweep Phantom Speed is better for something like that Sizzle earlier. Or we could try Brash Attack and Desperation Combo. That could work for Mikaya as well. In fact, that, that could work very nicely. Now we have Lobster Lord. Lobster with Heavy Blade Aether. Yay! I've seen builds like that a million times. And then Drive Speed, of course. I mean, it's pretty standard as things go with this Ryoma. This with Delthia. Stealthia with Swiss Sparrow instead of using my Stealthia, which loses all <laughs> of her defense. My Stealthia is like 40 plus zero with like a death of five thanks to life and death. Anyway, so Stealthia has offensive power of 45 speed, heavy blade, and blazing wind on. It's kind of like, hmm. I suppose what happens is after you kill someone with desperation, you have blazing wind ready to. To kill someone else with 54 attack is no oh no 58 attack is decent enough for something like this but <laughs> blazing winds are kind of a weird skill flimbertier with odin odin with life and death we have a discussion about that even with life and death he still only sits at 50 attack but hey you know he's got no, I would not. <laughs> I wouldn't call them decent defenses either. He, he's just hes just a little unfortunate to have too much HP for a mage. He, he, his stats are just a little too balanced in terms of everything. That's a problem with balanced stats sometimes. If your BST is low to begin with, sometimes your balanced stats work against you. Well, let's see, Blar Blade, Life and Man, you know, Blar Blade it will turn him into offensive action. In the end, it still will work, but damn it, 41 speed on Life and Death 3, oh god, why, why do people do this to Odin? Odin needs to be faster, man. Threatened speed is not going to help very much either. 
Still, I appreciate that he builds Olden. Most people avoid building something like that. Dude, he's a five star, 40 plus 10 Olden, dude. I definitely talked about him before, and I, but still. Yeah, Stella with Robin. Robin with Ventral Fighter. Distant Defend. Close Defends. Why not defend them all? So this thing is stock. It's pretty. Oh, except for this soul. So it's okay. You know, you tank, you heal. Although I'd much rather kill someone on the uh, on the counter attack. So is a good, decent move for um, soul wing maps and such. But if you're using them in the arena, you would better be serve to just kill someone outright. Because soul will not heal you forever, especially in the arena. Now we have Nephany, a distant counter, uh, 21 resist, why not? And then Wrath, Slaying Lance, I mean her speed is pretty fast, so you know, it could be enough to survive a single magic attack. And we have Infantry Pulse running on 46 health, mm, a bit of a stretch, but it's not that, it's not that low either. And then we have more attack. I suppose you kind of could use a little more attack. We have Steven, Steven with Al-Qaeda, Wing Sword Al-Qaeda, Iceberg, well, aren't you nasty? Though it'll take you another counter attack before you can, can hit someone with an Iceberg. Distant Defense, Quick Repulse, 41 speed, Death Ploy, oh my god, what a monster, Death Ploy, are you <laughs> serious? <laughs> Oh god, and then of course you can probably get more speed from your flyer friends. I mean, this is pretty good for Al-Qaeda, after all Al-Qaeda does have 38 res, so as a um, as mage counter goes, we have red for that, and we have green for the, with Camilla. Still, Steven has a pretty scary looking thing. Anyway, Mirth! Mirth has distant counter, quick repose, of course. And, I mean, seeing as great flame is here. Then you have solid stats across the board. Well, there's the reason why Mirth has been overused. And not using uh, Ayold Shield could. I mean, you might not always run into archers, so, you know, I can see the merit in that. And then you have close defense for. Any Mm, distant defense, close defense, it's all the same really, I mean, you're still going to be tanky enough to take a hit, so, yeah, cancer, I would love one myself, but unfortunately I have to save my orbs, so therefore I did not spend money for Dragon Nino. Magic Squid Blonde Nino, so now we've seen Dragon Nino, let's look at Blonde Nino, Blonde Nino is actually still really good, I mean, Look at that, 41 speed on an armor unit, 31 res is not exactly that bad either. Of course, top that off with Distant Dev, you have a pretty solid unit for surviving. I like it, I like this setup, it's not so very bad. Hone armor, mm, I guess she's a friend of some offensive armor type. So yeah, I mean, with or without the ward armor business, it's still very tanky. This Blanino is set up nicely. I like that. Alright, we now we have Flying Nino. Flying Nino with Brave Lands. Panic Ploy. Mm, I mean, Fort running off 46 attack is kind of eh, but I suppose it will work. I prefer to use her to tank, but Fury does help in that matter. I mean, still gives her up to 36, but mm, Desperation on 39 speed, again, is kind of awkward, but you do get flyer buffs, so it does get a little bit higher than that. Still, mm, I would prefer this kind of build on a more offensive flyer, like Cordelia, but, you know, we all like flying Eno, so something like this does happen. I mean, I think this this is the guy that I saw with the four flying Eno team. So when I think about it, never mind. I can understand totally why he would run that build now. Okay, and now we have another Al Qaeda from Air Raid. This Al Qaeda is set up for offensive action with Death Blow. So Death Blow Moonbow. Okay, you are a horrible person. So you would just proc Moonbow and then you. No, eh, 41 speed is okay, I guess, for slower units. Though, as you've seen, 41 speed is not going to help you against the faster ones, which is kind of ironic considering how fast Al-Qaeda is supposed to be. 
You see, a problem as we've seen is that a lot of those plus 10 units tend to have more than 41 speed. So you're, you could get flyer buffs. So if you put flyer buffs into consideration, that does help a lot. However, that's also, you know, considering that the enemy doesn't have flyer buffs or other buffs of their own too to help them with speed. Death Yana with a Celeph. And then I don't know what the Celeph is for, but I guess for countering melee attack, Growing Wing could be kind of useful. I mean, you tank a uh, melee. Well, then again, like 28 res. Jesus Christ. I didn't realize he can get that much res. And then you have Divine Turfing and <laughs> Deflect Magic. It is a pretty pretty interesting build. Actually, I, I kind of like it now that I've taken a better look at it. Yeah, so you're gonna tank magic like your dad, and then you're gonna suck up all the energy, and then when you're gonna reply back with a growing win. Not a bad setup. It's actually kind of scary. I, I can see the merit in this. Though I would prefer to run quick repose, you know, because you know, your speed is kind of like... Ugh. I mean, 30 defense is... Well, 34. Is good, but not super good. Getting doubled still kind of hurts. But for magic, though, not as much anymore, thanks to this setup. I, I like that a lot. 28 res, Jesus Christ. Prideless with a Nawi. Rollerblade Nawi. Well, it's just about as stock as you can get for flying, for flying blade creatures. I mean, unfortunately, 40 speed is not exactly going to double you much. But again, flyer buffs does come in handy, so... It's actually a little faster than that. Still, eh. It's about as standard as you get for blade flying units. Trey Terror with a 40 plus 10 cockroach boy! So, our friend here has decided to go and throw away the defenses of Gaius and given him this offensive Kagami Mochi. So, that lowers Luna to a two charge attack. And since he's pretty damn fast, I guess I can understand how this setup works. So, again, try to overpower someone. 54 attack is... It's good, but running on heavy blades kind of awkward. I hope they have flashing blade as a seal soon. That might be better for, for Cockroach Boy. Still, yeah, I can see how this thing works. You know, you just... Either you get hit and reply with a Luna, or you... Alright, well then again, uh, no, you have to attack first with this because of how heavy blade works. So you attack, and then your second attack would be Luna. Eh, kind of awkward though. Maybe, maybe like a four charge attack would be better because you still get countered attack back. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe like Dra Dragon Fang might be better because when you attack someone, you get two charge. Someone hits you back, you get three. And then on next attack, you'll be able to finish them off with a Dragon Fang. That might be better. 45 speed is still kind of... It's good, but eh. Uh-oh, I'm running low on battery. Again, well, I have to go to the Burger King soon. Well, let's wrap this up soon. So, let's see. My friend Franny here has... Okay, all right. 30 speed, and low 40. Although, mirror strike. Kind of weird. <laughs> I wouldn't... I guess it'll help you against dragon counter attacks. But that's usually not my concern when I use this. Because, you know, Falchon usually just... Chop, chop, and then dragon is dead. Savage Blow, I suppose you can use that to splash, and then afterwards you can go and get a Dancer to help you out to hit another target that has lost 7 health. Okay, not sure about this Axe Breaker though, but well, uh, if you're a poor dude who has to face uh, this arm, well, you're going to get slaughtered. Though I would prefer to use Sword Breaker for this. Close Defense is kind of weird as well because Alm is a player face unit, not an enemy face unit. I would run something else with that. At least attack plus three. Koopa with Mirth! Well, we already had a wonderful discussion about Mirth. This one has Iot Shield, so yeah, it's not gonna be easy to stop this one. Unless, of course, you have an Alm, and then Alm goes up and chop chop. But still, not easy to kill. I mean, Defense 40 is still pretty deadly, but for Alm, Alm will just slash this thing and turn it into fine butter. But for anything else besides that, though, this thing will tank it, and then Quick Repulse will immediately turn you into dust. And Joe, Joe Taro with wonderful Vanguard Ike, Super Magic Ike. Let's see, Warding Breath, of course, Radiant Meter, Wrath 3. 
I like it. I mean, it's practically the same setup I have, except mine is more focused on using the bonfire setup to get it on every counterattack. But, you know, I can see the merit in this thing. This thing is really nice. Heal everything back, but bonfire, I think, will do a little bit more damage. Oh, well, you know, if you need to sustain more, that's a good path. And now we have this! The Six Paths of Pain plus Pedal Path has appeared. And you're using Heavenly Light. Okay, alright, I know who to pick for help when I go and enter these stupid uh, uh, rival domains. Because this guy is set up for rival domains quite nicely. Fortress Death. Okay, alright, I mean, just throw away your stupid attack because you're just going to be inflicting pain anyway. Yeah, this guy has set up your pedal path quite nicely. Not sure about the wing as a mercy, but yeah, you've set up yourself quite nicely for some really disgusting pain action. I guess if you really just focus on healing, yeah, wings of mercy makes sense. I mean, he, this guy has thrown away all of his attacks, so having wrathful, razzle dazzle is kind of wasteful. I guess I can understand his thought process when he run this build. This this man is disgusting. I like it. He's not going to kill anyone with this Riz, but he's most certainly going to bring down the pain. And he's not going to be easy to kill, too, because, I mean, like, 34 and 40, eh, 46 health, though the speed kind of does suck a little. Still, he, I can see his plan with Riz, and it's so disgusting. Though my Riz will be built a little differently when if I ever build them like that. Flame mess with Tiki. Let's see what we have here. Well, we have guard with quick repose guard. I mentioned how important guard is before. So, but not in this video, I don't think. So let's, you know, reminder, guard is, guard quick repose is a very screwed up setup. It's either that or wrath with quick repose that is screwed up. But guard is really good. You shut off enemy attacks. So, you know, Al-Qaeda or something stupid tries to kill you. Well, unfortunately, you're just going to generate one charge. And then you're going to eat some Tiki attacks. Although Tiki can't quite kill Al-Qaeda either. Tiki only does magic damage. But, but at least Al-Qaeda will not kill Tiki. Not to mention, look at that 42 dev. Yeah, Al-Qaeda's not going to do much without skills. And you also have 32 res, so, you know, thanks to Lightning Breath with res plus 4, this thing can tank magic attack as well. So, yeah, I, I like this Tiki. That's probably how I would build Tiki myself. In fact, I... I mean, I can understand his thought process. I mean, this is pretty much the same thing as the um, President Obaro setup that he set for me. So, this guy embraces mixed defenses, and I appreciate people who embraces mixed defenses. And speaking of mixed defenses, we have Nosfera tool with Giraffe Girl. And as you can see, this man has decided to increase his dev to balance out his defenses. Runs quick repose, I'm running out of batteries, and close counter and close dev. Okay, alright. Not bad. You can counter both range and melee. Though Aether, again, is kind of... Oh, wait a minute. Ow. Oh, snap! I thought for a second that was Raven. Oh, snap. This build is even more evil than I had anticipated. Well, I now know who I'm going to also bring for my... Uh, <laughs> for my wonderful trips to the wonderful rival domains that this guy jesus christ dude you you're looking at so much attack speed and death and rest although the speed won't help god damn the sophia will be unstoppable ugh, ugh, ugh. and speed ploy i don't know about speed ploy i don't think she uses it as well i think res ploy might be better because you know Minoxes with Azura. Okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm a dancer. I also distant counter and distant def, but I have good res to run off of it and pretty decent speed. So, you know, it's a pretty stock dancer build, but it's good enough to go and counter range attacks as well. I like it, but that's really all there is to be said. And then there's Mista with life and death, dual savage blow. Uh, it's the same setup as we've seen before. He'll hit and kill someone, and then go and fire sweep another person to death again. And then the next target will have 14 he less health if properly uh, dancer supported. It's a screwed up setup. 
Cordelia is a super powerful archer. All right, well, and that concludes my player list check. So I thank you all for watching this little X plus 10 exhibition. And from next time on, I will show people that are on my, um, on my friend request list. Well, until then, I thank you all for watching. Until next time.